Hi, this is Tom Dick. I'm a math professor and a math advisor for Texas Instruments. This short video is part of the TI in Focus AP Calculus series. Here we'll be taking a look at the TI Inspire and how we can graphically interpret fundamental theorem of calculus. I'm going to start out with a graphing window and graph a function that we actually can't find an antiderivative for in closed form namely e to the negative x squared. It's an important function that actually arises in probability. We see a very nice bell-shaped curve. Uh, this curve at its ends, as x approaches either minus infinity or positive infinity, it gets flat very quickly, approaches zero. The high point of the curve is right at x equals zero. We have a y value of one. All right. Let's manufacture an antiderivative for this function using the fundamental theorem of calculus. In f2 of x, we're going to bring up the definite integral template. And then we'll enter, for our lower limit of integration, we'll use a, a number. It's pretty arbitrary. We'll pick 0. But we'll make our upper limit of an integration equal to our variable x. And now our function that we'll be integrating is our original function, f1. And we use it as a variable of integration t. So we'll integrate f1 of t dt. And remember, f1 is our original function, e to the negative x squared. All right, here's our graph of this definite integral function. And we can see that where our original graph was close to 0, our antiderivative graph has a slope that's close to 0. Where our function has a value of 1, our manufactured graph has a slope of 1. And again, here where our original function graph is close to 0, our definite integral graph has a slope close to 0. We can use this fundamental theorem of calculus method to manufacture an antiderivative for any continuous function. Now let's go back to our definite integral function here. I'm going to change the lower limit of integration from 0 to an indeterminate value a. When I enter the function, the TI Inspire will ask me if I want to create a slider for a. I do, and now I can vary that lower limit of integration. We see what this does is it actually vertically shifts the curve. It makes sense because all the antiderivatives for a single function can only differ by a constant. Varying the lower limit of integration accomplishes that. Okay, I'd like to turn to another document. It's one of my favorites called Integral of Piecewise Linear Function F. You can find it in the calculus section of Math Inspired on the TI Education website. It's going to let us take a look at antiderivatives of piecewise linear functions. Okay, let's check out what we've got going with this document. In the upper left pane, I have a couple of clicker sliders. One of them controls A, which is our lower limit of integration, and the other controls X, the upper limit of integration. In the upper right pane, you can see a piecewise linear graph, which is consisting of line segments connected end to end. I can control that value of x, which moves along the graph, but it is also changing that upper limit of integration. And you can see the definite integral value change on the fly down at the bottom. Here I'm moving x along. I can even grab it and drag it along and watch those integral values change. I can even drag that upper limit of integration x to the left of the lower limit of integration a, and you can see the definite integral values reported correctly. Okay, now that we have an idea how this document works, let's go to the next page where we'll actually take a look at a graph of that definite integral function. So this is a definite integral function for an original piecewise linear function. Okay, notice that we still have our clicker sliders to control the lower and upper limit of integration. Here's our piecewise linear function. Uh, but now we have a graph of the definite integral function, which we've denoted with a capital F. Okay, now as I change the value of x, of course that's going to change the value of the definite integral. But note that that definite integral value, which we represent with that shaded region, is now corresponding to the y value that goes with our upper limit of integration. So as I change x, I'm plotting the definite integral value as a y value as we move along the graph of the blue function graph. 
Now if I change the lower limit of integration, what happens to that graph? Notice we see again that's actually creating a vertical shift in the graph we had before. We can see that changing that lower limit of integration does not change the shape of the graph. It's only going to change its vertical position. Now let's do some graphical analysis. My red function graph, where it changes from positive to negative, is corresponding to a maximum on my blue function graph. Where the slope changes from positive to negative on the red graph, that's corresponding to an inflection point. From negative to positive value is a local minimum. Here's another place where the slope changes from positive to negative. It's an inflection point. Notice here where we have a red function value 0. That's going to correspond to a place where there'd be a horizontal tangent to our blue function graph. Uh, but that's neither a max nor a min. Now here's something neat. Notice that I can actually change the entire piecewise linear function by simply grabbing one of these black points and moving it. That means this file can be used to do a whole range of examples like this. For other tech videos and resources like this one, visit education.ti.com.